Welcome back to Slinging the Biscuit with Pat Shea. I am uh, I'm alone this episode and maybe for the foreseeable future as well because Trav and myself are in a bit of a, a tussle. A little, uh, it's all it's all virtual right now. We're having a virtual a Zoom tussle instead of Zoom school. We're in a tussle online. Uh, there's no intro song this week because I think it's stupid and uh, Trav should stop with his terrible songs that I never know. Um, but yeah, I think the podcast is now better without him. Um, I think obvious reasons, I'll get more into it later, you know, on a different episode, but him talking shit about pretty much everyone in the hockey community, I've just had enough of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to get things rolling on this episode with no Trav and, uh, yeah. You know what? People listening to the hey. audio version are just absolutely crapping their diet for listening to this. Yes, I'm here. I can hear everything you say. If you listen to the audio version, you probably crap yourself for the last like 30 seconds. If you listen to the video version, you're like, what is going on here? But if you didn't see, Pat All posted right. a reel two nights ago, okay? An Instagram reel. Caleb, do you have, or our guest, sorry, do you happen to see it? I didn't actually know. Okay, we'll talk about it in a sec. Pat sent it to me before he posted it, and I, I, I was getting off the ice. I watched the reel and I literally crapped myself laughing at this concept. And, and I knew what he was doing. I knew he was going to do this because he told me about it. And <laughs> for the folks watching on the video platform, we'll, we'll give you a little looky loo. So Celeste is here. Brittany Palmer, Brooklyn Red also on hand. Game Red is in the building. And the Pat said that to me. <laughs> I just about died. Because <laughs> you did such a good job. And when you need me in the face, the ask your knee to the face, yeah. my head, my face changed. <laughs> <It was> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're not happy with each other, but we're going to keep it professional today because we have Caleb on the podcast. We're, 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 we're businessmen. We're professionals at the end of the day. But yeah, just know things are rough on the biscuit. Speaking of rough, uh, have you bought the Tyron with the uh, Jake Paul pay-per-view yet or no? Not yet. I'm going to get it like night of. Okay. I was watching the All Access. It's some pretty good stuff. Dude, it's pretty good. It's very professional. <laughs> it almost, I watched about you know 25 of the 30 minutes and it almost made me want to pay for the pay-per-view. I'm still going to pirate it, but like, I maybe right. want to like pay for it. Yeah. So. Caleb, are you big on those? Like the YouTuber boxing matches? Do you get into it at all? Not really. I watched one and I showed up actually late for it, so uh, it was a tough <laughs> bounce. I missed like the whole fight pretty much. Yeah. Showed up late. It was like, yeah, I'll be at this time. I think it was the last Jake Paul fight. Showed up late. The ask her on. Yeah, it was a tough bounce, but uh, I'm starting to get into it a bit though. My friends are really into it though. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty into it. Trav's like whatever. He watches them, but he's not. I I was hooked because I watched the first like Logan Paul versus KSI one. And I just got hooked on it ever since. Yeah. So now, I'm, so I'm, I'm into it, just in. not as passionate about about it as, as you are. Like it's I still so, watch it's fun, in the loop. It's so fun. They no. talk shit like they're like they're real killers, you know. It's like <laughs> it's funny. It's it's absolutely entertaining. Uh, we got a couple of housekeeping notes for uh, episode twenty two intro song. By the way, was uh, either you want it Royal Blood? Uh, contrary to what Pat said, we do have an intro song this week because I do the editing, so I'm gonna put it in. Uh, we got a quick plug to uh, Nate Carl. Guys, listen on Google Podcast, Pat. We got two people that messaged me this week and said, "Hey, I'm listening on Google Podcast." We got two. Um, that shocked me to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, so Carl or Nate Carl, shout out to you, buddy. Also, uh, DoorDash Pete. DoorDash Pete. This is what this guy sent me. Listening in the car. Podcast delivering some some DoorDash, some Uber Eats out here in Minnesota. Listening to the pod. Stopped when I started recording. But yeah, I just thought I'd send you this and uh, listen to episode 20. What a Love nice guy. Love God bless that. you, Pete. You're a DoorDash guy too. You relate to that, eh, Pat? Yeah, I dash here and there. I get that. You got to entertain yourself while you're dashing. And how do you do that? Well, listening to Slang in the Biscuit. <laughs> you know, you know, I had, an, I had an idea the other day, okay? So, since I've been in Vancouver, I've been taking the bus and the SkyTrain everywhere. I was thinking to myself on the bus, this idea hit me, okay? If I had a car, which I will have when I, when I go to Sweden in a couple of days, I'll be picking up my car. 
And you know, it'd be great as if I put the aux cord in and I, and I put our podcast on. I go to pick up a lady or whatever, you know, for, for a date night or whatever. Be like, oh, who's this guy on the radio? Must be pretty important, eh? Listen He's got a nice voice. <laughs> I like yeah, this guy's voice a, really a voice. lot. <laughs> He's making some great points, too. <laughs> She's going to wow, shit on looking. him. That's the biggest pickup line for sure right there. Yeah. Listen to your podcast, eh? Yeah. That's a power move. <laughs> <laughs> That's a first date. Speak, speaking of business, okay. So last week we talked a little bit about uh, handshakes. Pat, you know, thought it was important that you know you get a good firm grip on the handshake and these wet noodles. And if you mess up, you know, we came up with a backup plan for like how to diagnose a, a poor handshake. And this thought came to me when my dad called me and grilled me for last week's podcast that my dad used to tell me all the time as a kid, "Give me some skin, son. Give me some skin. You want you want a handshake." So I, I don't know what that had to do with anything, but you gave me a little bit of skin last night, Pat, over Facetime. I gave you skin. <laughs> What? Yes, you did. What? what skin did I give you over FaceTime? My pancake company. Oh, right. Yes. I don't know if you can say I gave you skin, but yeah, we, we uh, you called me randomly. Actually, this was kind of funny because you called me and I missed it. And then you texted me in all capitals. This is important. You're, you're like the boy who cried wolf because I call no. back. I'm like, shit, I step out of the car. I'm like, I gotta make a call quick. And you literally just like, yo. So I'm thinking about starting a pancake company. <laughs> like, do you have any names <laughs> that you, you think? You brainstorm any names for me? Like, oh, sure, Trav. <laughs> this is the important news. Travy Cakes. That was my best option. Well, Tra- Travy Patty Cakes and then Trav's Hot Cakes. And see, we had our little... Deli- Travy Patties. But they're not burgers. They're pancakes. Nah, they're still patties. The protein pancakes. Yeah. I think we're on to something there. Travi patties. If you're listening to the podcast, Caleb included, you got an idea for my pancake company <laughs> launch in 2022, let us know. Send us an email. Send us a message. Personally, our Instagram account got disabled for 30 days, but that's okay. Yep. Uh, give us a shout. Um, and this is also why I texted Pat in all caps. This is important because the last time I did it, he called me back right away. was like, what is the problem? And I was like, okay, well, it worked. So I'm going to get a call back right away. And it worked again. Uh, next uh, time it probably won't, but that's okay. I'm two for two here. We're, we're shooting 100 percent here. So, uh, you want to talk about ver- verification real quick, there, Pat? Well, yeah, actually, Trav. Literally, we were on Facetime. I think it was two days ago. He's like, I was like, you ever try requesting verification? He's like, no, I'll try that again. Literally, like two hours later, he's verified. Just like starts making a scene on Instagram, <laughs> posting that he's verified, thinking he's the man and all that. And uh, I thought it was pretty embarrassing that you requested. I don't know. But what you should do is request for our Sling of the Biscuit to be verified so then we can't get banned again. I had an idea actually about that. I'm going to request the verification and you'll request the verification too, both of us, and we'll see if that works. Um, On a side note, verification-wise, that wasn't the most embarrassing thing I did. The most embarrassing thing I did was apply to a talent agency to try to get myself a YouTube manager after I got the verification. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've been trying to get one for a while, and I was like, you know, this might be the icing on the cake, the icing on the Travi Patty, shall we say. Right. You know? Trying to get a manager. Yeah. That's it's worth a shot so now that you're, now that you're verified. Which, this is the first podcast we've ever done where everybody in the podcast is collectively verified. We are three for three. We're shooting 100% today. Yeah, because you're finally verified. It feels good. It feels good. Okay. <laughs> Our last guest was not verified either. Jonas Senroff, great guy. He listens to the podcast every week. Love he's you. Not. Talk to you soon. He's not verified. No, no. Wow. And he is an NHL goalie for multiple teams for a lot of games. I think he qualified for the NHL pension plan. We should get him back on and ask him about that. Two hundred games as a goalie, you get a pension get plan or something oh, like that. That's not bad at all. No, not bad. A couple bucks. <laughs> anyway, uh, without further ado, we have a guest this week. Uh, we talked about last week. Pat, when I, when I told Pat we have this guest coming on. <laughs> Caleb, he legitimately thought we were interviewing a horse. I was like, oh, we got a humble Bronco coming on. He's like, we're having a horse? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, I love that. <laughs> you, you worded it weirdly because you had told me before that we were having him on and then like I forgot or whatever and you called me up and you're like, so are we, something like, I just heard like Bronco next week on the podcast. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> having a you Bronco. Know what? If, I'll, I'll be honest for a second. I was putting the text together. I remember I put the text together. I was sitting at Starbucks using their free Wi-Fi, drinking their free water. And I put the text together and I was like, no, I'm going to word this differently. I'm going to really put them in a blender here. And then I got a text back. We're interviewing a horse. <laughs> uh, well, 
<laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll be a horse for the night. Yeah. I'll be fine. <laughs> you know the cutaway in Family Guy when they have the the bull in the china shop and it just destroys everything and takes off. That that's what I picture: the horse destroying everything and taking off. And we have him, you know, sit down for the interview, yeah. mic set up, and everything. Anyway, Caleb Dahlgren, Humble Bronco, welcome to the Slang of the Biscuit podcast program. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for having me on, you guys. Well, really come on. Appreciate this. Thank you. Yeah, not a horse. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> we'll have a horse eventually with time. Speaking of things you're having, I got a question for you. Have you seen the new Kraft Dinner flavor boosters? Pat was thrown for a pretzel when I told him this the 10 minutes ago. Do you know what that is? The what, sorry? Kraft Dinner flavor boosters is a brand new thing. You haven't seen this? No, this is all new to me, especially with my initials being KD. This is something I should be getting into. Oh, buddy. Buddy, listen to me, okay? Listen to me here for a second. You listen well, okay? You're going to get a brand manager for yourself after this program, and you're going to get a deal with Kraft Dinner. I'll take 25% off KD, you have Thank to. Thank you for yeah. asking. Okay. The flavor boosters. It's like a it's like a packet. It's just a straight-up packet. You put it in your normal Kraft Dinner. So you got to buy the Kraft Dinner box, you know, your white cheddar, your whole wheat, whatever, you know, the original, whatever you're into. And they got cotton candy flavored, flavor booster, poutine, buffalo chicken, butter chicken, and what was the other one? Pizza? I Cotton think candy. Wings. And um, creamy ranch uh, pizza, I, th- I think. I, I messed up like half of them. But like yeah. the cotton candy and the poutine was for sure uh, one. Poutine sold out, by the way. Yeah. I was just saying, yeah, poutine would be delicious. Cotton candy? I don't know. Like, that sounds that... weird, right? I don't know. Could you well, do my that? Woman face... that? Well, my woman FaceTimed me the other night and, and told me about this. And I, and I was like, okay, we could, we're going to talk about this. Butter and then I, I Googled it. I searched up, uh, you know, the Cotton Candy one, and it's like pink craft Dinner. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it is. That looks weird. I don't know. I'll, I'll try it. I want to try it. Yeah, and for Would those listening home. Bowl or just like a little bit? Would you try a little bit or a big bowl? I'll try a spoonful first, and if I like it, I'll just have the whole bowl. If not, I'll throw it in the trash. I don't care. It's like 99 cents for a craft. So, <laughs> <laughs> it is the best, though. I love craft mac and cheese. It is great. Also, just for the record, when you are doing the flavor booster, you're supposed to put the flavor booster and the cheese packet. Don't skip the cheese packet, otherwise you'll have cotton candy pasta. It, it's I, I saw a, like a, a tutorial video on that gone wrong. Somebody's like, I'm just eating straight cotton candy and noodles. You got to put the cheese pack in there, apparently. Yo, so you know what I just realized about Kraft? Because yeah, I was thrown off when you were saying Kraft dinner. It's only Kraft dinner in Canada. Like, K- like KD is on the uh, box in Canada, but in the U.S. it's Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, like oh. the, the logo is different. It says Kraft, like their little Kraft logo, and then it says Macaroni and Cheese. It's just different. That's why I was so thrown off. Travis telling me before the podcast, he was like, Kraft Dinner. I was picturing like, uh, you know, like the, what are those old little like microwavable dinners, you know, the frozen dinners you would get? I was picturing those. Oh. <laughs> like <laughs> well, Hunger like, Man. Yeah, like Hungry Man or maybe Kraft used to make some. I forget what they were. Oh, Kids Cuisines. Kids Cuisines. Oh, yeah, the sidekicks. Yeah. (laughs) All that stuff. For some reason. Pat probably hasn't seen this, but Caleb, you ever remember the commercial? Like when you were a kid, it was a Kraft commercial where it was like Katie can go anywhere and they're playing like street hockey. You know, you're probably around like that 8 to 10 year old age bracket. And they they come inside and mom's like, you got to sit down. And they throw the Kraft dinner in the blender, blend it up. And they, they put like on like a beer chugging helmet, like a thing craft dinner, and they drink the KD from their helmet while they're playing street hockey. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I think I recall it. You'll definitely have to bring this up and show the viewers what it looks like one time. Fork or spoon, Trav? Yeah, uh, spoon guy all day, every day. For, ma- with for ketchup, Mac? Please. For Mac or what are you saying? Uh, you eat ketchup? You eat ketchup with a spoon? Well, yes, because ketchup is awesome. Oh, with ketchup. Oh, skip. okay. Yes, with, with ketchup. It. Put the ketchup on, See? swirl it around, not all the way, a little ah. bit, and then get that spoon in there, and then you just go out of town like Kobayashi on the 4th of July. <laughs> Kobayashi's a thing of the past, man. Joey Chestnut. Is he still? Joey, oh. Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut's a man. Yeah, he breaks his record every year. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a fork or spoon guy, Pat? I'm a spoon guy for Mac. I don't put ketchup in, though. Doll, you throw hot dogs in there, too? <laughs> no, I actually had before once. It was an absolute game changer. Real good. Get some cheese, like cheese, uh, oh my, like smokies. Those cheese mm, filled smokies. Yeah, you yeah. throw that in there, it's a game changer. So throw in a little bit of ketchup too. But uh, I'm a spoon guy, 100% spoon. Hell yeah. yeah. 
The smokies chopped up and the macaroni and cheese, that's poor man's filet mignon. Let me tell you that in Canada. It's a <laughs> delicacy, I'm telling you. Anyway, uh, speaking of delicacies, we got to talk to you about today's video sponsor or podcast sponsor. Geez, sorry, wrong program. I was doing an ad this morning, by the way. Uh, before we get into things, folks at manscaped.com. Yep. What season is it? This. It's sex season. September is is sex season. A big season, a big month for and you need to be you need to be shaven and clean down there for the girls or guys depending on what you like and your gender and then also depending on what that gender likes. You guys got to be fresh and ready to go or you're not going to you know finish the job. You're not going to go for the full home home run, especially not an inside the park home run. Don't even try. Mm-hmm. Unless you use Manscaped and prep, you know, preferably our code. So, Trav, what's the code? No, mandatory. Mandatory yeah. our code. Mandatory Bizkit, our B-I-Z, code. B-I-Z-K-I-T. If you don't use our code, we will come and find you. We'll send Pat to your house. And a matter of fact, we'll send him to your house. But first off, he's going to go to your grandma's house for the warm-up and then your house. Now, here's yep. the thing. When you go to manscaped.com, you pick up a lawnmower for you. See this beauty? You see this thing right here? All right? You're going to be light on your feet, right? You're cutting off weight cutting off hair off your chest, you know, the chest pubes, the ball throw, your neck, your back, your ass, your balls, mm-hmm. the whole thing. If you're like a swimmer, like an Olympic swimmer, this is the official buzzer for the Olympic swim team, man. You got to be shaving your legs with this oh, thing yeah. if you're into that or if you're a lady. If, you know, you're like Pat and you got like Joe Rogan ape arms, you know, well, you don't need to. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you get the lawnmower, it's a clean shave, 90-minute battery life. So unless you're Italian, even Pat doesn't need the full 90 minutes. But Italians, no. you'll need two of them. You'll need the full 180, and it's waterproof. So let's say you're in the tub. You're like, oh, man, I'm disgusting. i got to take care of this. You can just go to town yeah. in the tub. You ain't going to get electrocuted. It's great. Especially if you're living on your own. You don't got to worry about somebody else having to clean up your dead corpse. It's great. Pat, finishing comments here. Promo code Biscuit69. B I Z in America. It's not. It's not sixty nine. It's it's biscuit twenty, right? Uh, B I Z K I T. We're not allowed to use the biscuit sixty nine promo code anymore. So it's just biscuit. Just, just biscuit. biscuit. No yeah, biscuit yeah, okay. sixty nine. B I Z in America, not Z. B I Z K I T. And uh, yeah, go get them now, or uh, well, you're not. Well, you're not gonna have any success in the bedroom. As simple as that. And you're going to get shit from the boys in the locker room. No one likes, like, you walk in the shower and there's a guy with a huge bush. It's just weird and awkward yeah. for everyone. I've been that guy until I found Manscaped. And it's it's yeah. weird, you know? Like, you kind of feel self-conscious, though. You kind of turn in the corner. Like, what are you doing? Like, fine. I have a bush. Mm-hmm. But now I don't have to do that because I have Manscaped. So go get yours today and uh, join the boys of Biscuit. Yeah. And honestly, I'll tell you, the worst thing for my personal life in the last probably 25 years is when Pat got his Manscaped lawnmower. I used to haze this guy all the time. I used to mm-hmm. pick on him. I used to send him texts, be like, nice bush, you loser. <laughs> now that he took care of it, I got nothing to do with my free time. Man. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm literally, I'm I'm empty. I'm empty inside. Yeah. I got nothing to do. <laughs> so maybe, uh, Dolly, maybe I'll have to start coming after you next, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've wanted one. I've wanted one for a while. I haven't gone on the Manscaped trend. I'm still on the Razor, but I've w- heard about it. Heard great things. It's nice. I recommend. And it'd be nice if I could actually try one first so I could recommend it for people. We'll have to. We'll yes, have to you, you did text me like two months ago. We gotta. I'll have to send Dom a message. Be like, can we get this guy on you know a lot more package? What do you say? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thanks to Manscape as always for sponsoring the podcast. Um, anyway, we will move on. Uh, Swaggy P. Pat, our boy Pete Lynch. Oh what a yes, gem. what a beauty. Have, uh, yes, Caleb, have you seen Swaggy P. on Instagram? He's I don't, I don't know how to describe him where where he was posted like the elevate hockey elevate hockey but he does these elevate like two. absurd like one handed moves and crazy skill work um oh, yeah. online yeah, yeah 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 and he well like obviously there's a few guys like that um, obviously always hockey does his tricks and he played at a he's played at like a mediocre junior level and whatnot and like Pavel Barber but no Swaggy P Actually, we were looking into him more uh, just, oh, I just now, but Trav was telling me he actually was like a D1 player, played years pro and had success, went over to Europe and was like over a point per game kind of guy. So I'm now curious to see if Swaggy P was actually like doing moves like this in a game. Yeah. No, you got to check it out. No. Nah. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the crazy thing is, so he's raw, like Rob, like Rob from Butt Ends. He's Rob's mm-hmm. boy. And anytime I'm talking to Rob about social media, he's always like, dude, you see what Swaggy P's doing? <laughs> I'm hanging out with Swaggy P. I'm hanging out with Pete, Pete Lenz. And I, I was looking up uh, his stuff the other day because, like, like, Rob's always talking about Swaggy P. So I look him up, and four years at University of Vermont, was an A for two years, played in the American League, played in the Cheddar. 
was over a point a game in the uh, in Europe. I can't remember what league. There's there's a lot of leagues, and I can't pronounce half the names. But the point that blew my mind is this guy's captain in Europe. You now he's assistant at D1. He's a, he's almost a point per game in the East Coast, and he's five foot four. Yeah, like so. This I think that's why. I think that's why he didn't make it. Like that's probably why he didn't make the NHL. Like he's probably oh. skilled enough to play, <laughs> but he's just five four. That's so little. That's that's like uh, smaller than Nathan Gerby. That's just, yeah, Nathan Gerby, yeah. Yeah. And then, Trav, what did you make? You made a comment before this about, uh, he said, <laughs> you little people to me. You <laughs> little people. You know, so, I, well, I said, I said <laughs> specifically, I said, you know, it's pretty impressive for a little guy, like, like some of you little people. And Pat says, hey, what does that mean? I said, well, anything under six feet is probably like a small guy. Keep in mind, this is coming from a guy who's six five. That's I got bullshit. nothing but love for the small guys. The small guys love a little harder than the big guys, okay? takes a little bit while to get the blood flow that is up to your head to kind of get the message out that's bullshit so yes, i'm yes, i'm 511 a little under 511 but i round up to 511 that i've looked up the average height of an american male is five foot nine okay so okay. i'm above average so calling anyone under six feet little that's bullshit man and caleb <laughs> how tall are you i'm even smaller i'm five foot eight so, I mean, I'll take the heat. I've had short jokes my whole entire life. I've had diabetic jokes my whole entire life. So, um, I just, I represent it now. I embrace the five foot eight gang. Hell yeah. Yeah, so Trav, you're outnumbered here, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> We're coming for your knees. <laughs> oh. Which will be about your head height. <laughs> I'll literally be up to your chest. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm not kidding. Okay, so you want to, we talk about how uh, a lot of guys in the community, like, like have like a, a, a little bit of a beef with me. They, they don't like me. So the first time I ever met Pavel Barber, I think I told Pat the story. So I met Pavel Barber at uh, Let's Play Hockey Expo Minnesota. I'm like, hey, Barb, you want to get a picture? Okay, sure. So we get a picture, and obviously the dude's like five foot five or whatever. I take a picture of him, and I caption it, bring your kid to work day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine why he was upset about that. Man, Swaggy P, we'd have to get him like a couple phone books. Holy so shit, he's yeah. As Barber. Yeah. If you need a guy to uh, shave your bush with your manscape lawnmower just call up swaggy p man he'll be right in hey, there he's hey, right hey, at that you mind uh getting down yeah thanks buddy appreciate that it's tough to get in those those uh, crevices no no I'll, I'll love to swaggy p though he's he's more skilled than than all of us so Dude, you, you know what i like i like chirping the stick trick guys but like i got nothing but respect for the guy when i oh, went yeah. through his elite prospects and keep in mind my least prospects is like you know, a hot tire fire in a garbage dumpster. But like looking at Swaggy P, it's like, man, like this guy is the real deal. And he's doing the tricks. Like, yeah. I subscribed. I followed. Yeah, it's cool. I didn't follow, cool but see. I subscribed. I buy his lawnmower over mine. Yeah, well, it's only a matter of time before you start talking shit and then he gets mad at you. And I mean, it happens, Trav. I, I DM'd him twice, tried to fanboy. I fanboyed over him in February when I first heard about him from Rob. And I fanboyed about him recently. Both didn't get a reply. But I'm verified now, so maybe I'll, I'll shoot wow. my third shot. Yeah. Is he? Does he have a big following? Oh, he's got like eighty thousand or hundred thousand, dude. He's the real deal. Damn. Well, he's got more followers than all three of us combined, and then some. <laughs> well, yeah, he big he big dogged you then. <laughs> yeah, you know who? Yeah, you, you, a side note here. I keep DMing Robin Leonard, and he keeps reading yeah. my messages, and he doesn't reply. That's so chat. tough. <laughs> I'm like. Lens, I'm in your neighborhood, buddy. Gothenburg, Sweden, the motherland, the greatest country on earth. Let's grab a cup of Joe. Let's have some Joe, yeah. Yeah, let's have some Joe. You know who I'm going for Joe with? Matty Tompkins, Chicago Blackhawks uh, prospect, playing for Lunda. There you go. The and, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Looking forward that's to that. A hot, that's a hot start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. French double, cup of Joe, get her in you. Let's go. Uh, shall we, uh, speaking of, of, uh, double doubles and whatnot, uh, Dolly, we're going to bring in the first topic of the day. Okay. Now, all right. You know, Pat, do you want to read this? Maybe it's better Pat reads this instead of I do. Sure. I'll take the heat. First, first one. Um, Trav's not a fan of Saskatchewan mm, and he wanted, right. he wanted me to tell you that. <laughs> that's all right. You don't, you don't have to be a fan of it. It's okay. It's, I like it. It's a little flat. <laughs> Um, not really many mountains or anything. No mountains actually at all, but uh, I like it. No no hurt feelings, though. Respect it. <laughs> well, I, the question was that, in my opinion, as a fellow Flatlander from uh, you know Winnipeg, Manitoba, in my opinion, Saskatchewan has two bright spots. A Tesla dealership in Saskatoon and Rampage Coffee, also in Saskatoon. Are you the third bright spot also coming from Saskatoon? 
<laughs> not at all. No, I think Sasuke has a lot more okay. to offer than me. Um, you could think of like some NHLers who are elite from Saskatoon as well, who won the cup. There's also a lot of famous people from Saskatoon too. So um, I'd say those two are pretty cool though. Rampage, I like that. Ramp- I'm never not really a big coffee guy, but I've heard of it. Um, and Tesla is pretty sweet too. Like lots of people are driving Teslas in Saskatchewan now. I don't know if it's hold up in the winter, but uh, they're driving those. So. I got something here, fellas. I got something. I don't know if you can hear me with the microphone all the way over here. Okay. Oh yeah, I get it. This is how I. Uh, this is how serious I take my coffee game on the road, right here. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh yeah, look look at this big bag of beans, the five kilo, the five kilogrammer, Let's, or five pounder. <laughs> Bring it all the way down to Sweden. <sighs> That's commitment. That's commitment, Trav. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Uh, side note here, my uh, my Chemex. You know what Chemex is, Pat Dolly? No. I don't. I am sorry. No, I don't know okay. much. I guess. Jeez, I've been. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Chemex, Chemex is like the glass thing you brew coffee. You put like a filter, a little glass thing. You, you know what I mean? You put your coffee in. So I bring my mobile coffee set with me on the go all the time when I'm on the train, plane, anywhere I travel. My my uh, you know my tea kettle, everything. So I'm making coffee on the train about three weeks ago, and uh, I pulled my charger off my phone, and I dropped, and I, I put it down, and I dropped it on the Chemex, and shattered everywhere. My coffee trip has been ruined. I got to get a new one at IKEA next week in Sweden. That's a tough balance. Like I just that just sounds uh-huh. pretty disappointing. You know, <laughs> just what can you do now? Kind of out of coffee, your SOL for that. We gotta go to McDonald's now. Yeah, only Starbucks, option yeah. is McDonald's <laughs> or Starbucks. Can't go to Tim Hortons these days. So McFlurries. Um, speaking of, of big money, you were on uh, Chicklets recently. How was that? You want to talk about that for a sec? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I actually was not expecting to get the call up for Chicklets, but I was cool to kind of get it. I know Biz through our agent, we have the same agency. And so uh, I was able to meet him a couple times beforehand. And uh, my agent threw it by them if they were interested and they hopped on board ASAP and they loved it. So um, it was pretty cool, it was a unique experience. It's one of those things that you never think you'll get on. But uh, yeah. to be on it, it's something that you definitely could check off the bucket list. Did you uh, receive what they like to call the chiclets bump? Did you get a little, uh, I don't know, if, uh, increase in followers because of their going on their podcast that's, that's what they like to call it chicklets, chicklets bump. bump um maybe i'm not i think so, oh, I'm not so sure. it's all it's kind of, it was i honestly think yeah i think i think i did a bit but the big thing was that it was kind of at the peak of the book too so i think that was uh, like also kind of a thing but together uh, yeah i think it all there's lots of different wheels moving into that piece for sure but i think checklist bump was definitely a thing i got lots of messages which was absolutely incredible just hearing like how people were able to connect with the episode or how it changed their perspective or even made oh, yeah. them be a better person at the end of it was something that i really, That's really cool. enjoyed yeah that is super cool well, there's no way you're gonna top the messages dale we got. <laughs> <laughs> what did dale Weiss do uh, so my boy Dale Weiss, he's from Winnipeg, and uh, we had him on our podcast a couple of weeks, well, a couple months ago now. It's been a while. Yeah, it's a little while. And uh, yeah, he so he was on Chicklets, and he was telling us how uh, he just got every dirt bag from Boston. He was like, you suck, Weiser. We still hate you. The Bruins should have won in seven. Just all these nasty things. I, I was talking That's to the other days in Sweden. Dude. Gonna be uh, gonna bring him back on in September, hopefully. But uh, yeah, he said it was it was it was a good experience in the podcast, but the backlash was uh, expected. Yeah, I didn't get much backlash at all, to be honest. I'm yeah, I'm surprised I didn't. I thought I was going to because some it's like one of those frowned upon ones, depending on who you are as a person. Um, mm-hmm. So I, it's not really who I am though. I don't really swear much. I don't do drugs or drink or anything like. You hear that, Pat? You hear that, Pat? <laughs> I get, I get. Sorry, I get crap for swearing a lot. <laughs> there we go. There we I go. Got, I have a potty mouth. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. okay. I it's so <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that at all. I just don't do that kind of thing. So no, I feel you. Yeah. Easy to love. <laughs> we we're we're more controversial a bit, especially Trav. Even though I'm a, I swear more, but Trav, Trav gets everyone hating him. Trav is either loved or hate, no in between. So a lot of hate, a lot of love. Of hockey. Gets people Nickel talking. Back <laughs> we uh. Sorry, go ahead. Go. What you're gonna say. I was just say, well, that's a, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing right now. What would you say, Trav? You think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Be the Nickelback of hockey. 
I, I, I love Nickelback, dude. I own all their CDs, so I'd say it's a good thing. <laughs> I love Nickelback too, though. Like I have nothing. Wrong They're with great, Nickelback. man. Oh, yeah, they put on a <laughs> like show, Nickelback. dude. What an incredible show! If you get a chance to go to a concert, um, you, you got to check them out. I, I, I'm just judging from what I've seen on YouTube. I haven't actually gone to a, a show. <laughs> My mom went to two Nickelback concerts, like in the early two or early 2010s. Mm. And uh, as an adult, that's one of my bigger regrets is not checking them out when you could have, obviously, pre-COVID. Well, any band or artist who has as many hits as they do, I mean, hard to argue they're not great. So anyone hating on Mm. them, they're lying. They're lying to themselves. And how can you hate a guy who puts a hockey rink in the basement of his house? Hey, I don't know. (laughs) Beats me. Not a half size, a full size rink and a bony. Getting the bony in there, ripping around, fresh sheet of ice for the boys on a Friday night. (laughs) Like, oh yeah, it was. It would cost him five million bucks, but who cares? He's got the money. <laughs> so speaking of uh, Trav's beef and stuff, he he has a beef. <laughs> we won't rename him because we talk about him a lot. But of this oh, beef, but he, here we go. Get he he bones. he gets a he has a beef with someone specific who, when he goes on podcasts, he charges people. How much is it? How much does he charge? One hundred and fifty US. If you don't pay the one hundred fifty US. US, see you later. He says no. So when we had him on ours, he, he said he's giving us a break, whatever. And But we, we we kind of thought it was weird. I don't know. Maybe it's a thing people do, but that's what we're trying to figure out. We don't want to judge him for it. Personally, we haven't thought to charge. When you went on like Chicklets or when you – like you didn't ask us obviously to pay you, but like when you go on Chicklets or other podcasts, do you charge? Is that a thing? Thank that God. Do? We have no money, by the way. We have no money to pay. <laughs> oh, no. That's not a thing at all. I've never done that. At all, I do it really okay. in my heart, or like, yeah, no, never have ever charged money. Okay, and I want to be very, very, very clear about one thing with this. Okay, and, and, and I know there's just like dust left from the bones, and I'm still picking at it. You know, it's just it's been dead for like two decades. Okay, when when you're smaller than than me and Pat, and you're trying to ask people for 150 bucks, and not just people asking, a, you know, a little girl, a little boy starting their podcast. Like, Pat, how many times have you and I gone on podcasts where it's just a couple mm-hmm. kids starting on a podcast, or like 13, they're 15, yeah. and like, you know what? I I have better things to do. But, yeah. you know, as somebody who's involved in the community, it's my obligation to give you my time because I owe it to you. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to charge you. I'm not going to, you know, bitch and moan. I'm going to try my best with, you know, my flexibility to, you know, make some time. It may take a week, yeah. it may take two weeks, but we'll get it done. And to ask them for 150 bucks, that that's what pisses me off. That's what really pisses me off. Sorry. <laughs> it's that's okay. Fair. You go on your tangent. That's all right. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, no, not at all. I would never do that. Yeah. I think it's, okay. it's fair, we it's no fair to, to be upset about Trav. It's, okay. it's fair. Because it's, you know, you're just doing it when you're doing like a smaller podcast like that. Like, uh, I don't know, they're usually like high school kids. And it's more like, yeah, yeah I have I have an hour to spare. I'll, I'll help them out. It's just like out of like the goodness of your heart, you're trying to help them out. Maybe they get a few more listens than they usually do. You know, they're not really getting more than 50 listens a podcast. You know, you're just kind of like going on there hoping that they helps them out a little bit. And I don't know. So that's where for us, uh. I feel like it's about. Right. Dude, 50 listens. They, they're probably not even getting five listens. Yeah, it's just like yeah, about helping the nice. community. Out. Yeah, I, I, I know yeah. you're trying to be nice. The, the part that really set me over the edge was when he told us before. We, so we had this guy on our podcast and he told us, and Pat, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> before our podcast, he's like, you know, uh, I usually charge for uh, appearances like these, but uh, I'll help you guys out. Do you guys a favor. Uh, we'll charge you. And he's, he's talking to... A YouTube stud over there, Trav for Oilers. You know who does he think he is, Trav? <laughs> Coming on who like that, <laughs> I will ruin your career. I will end you. Oh no! Show no way! This house. <laughs> <laughs> no way! That's great. <laughs> okay, Trav likes I'm, to I'm talk. Glad you brought, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot one point last week because we, we talked about uh, this because somebody left a comment on uh, our YouTube channel was like uh, Trav has no loyalty. Okay, and I, I wanted to clarify one thing. The difference between like that and like me and Pat is like there's some respect, you know what I mean? And I've always, I was always raised like this. I was, I'm always a firm believer. If you give me respect, I give you respect, and it goes back and forth. If there's no respect, dude, I got no loyalty to you. If you're gonna be a dink and you show zero respect for me, and, and you're disrespectful, right? Like you've been respectful to me so far in our, our integrate or integrations. This isn't isn't an ad. And in our interactions, Pat has been right. It goes it goes all the ways. But when there's no respect, that it, it irks me. Sorry. Trav likes speaking his mind. He just has no problem yeah. speaking his mind, which is 
I can't yeah. stop. I won't stop. That is fine. But uh, <laughs> social media presence. We'll move on to the next topic. Um, I guess we're, we're transitioning well today. Yes, eh? we're, yes, we're rolling a tight ship. For yes, yeah, so for me, like obviously, you know, you were part of a tragedy, and I'm sure you've talked about that story probably close to a thousand times now. Um, for me, what I found admirable was how you, you know, were able to keep going. You know, I don't want to call it like turning the page as much, but just to keep going. And now you've created a presence on social media. You've, I've seen on your page that you've talked publicly, you wrote a book and you've also started a, a program for diabetes, diabetes, very clever name. But, uh, what I wanted to know is kind of like your mindset as you're going into these things, kind of like how you were able to, you know, finally go, okay, I'm ready to now be that, you know, voice on social media. And now I'm going to write a book and I'm going to start this program. I'm really like coming like an entrepreneur and, you know, starting to do really cool things going into the next chapter of your life. So I was just kind of curious of like the mindset that you have, because I'm sure it's pretty cool. Thank you. Appreciate that. It means a lot. So I started Dahlgren's Diabetes actually before the crash. That was in Humboldt where I started it up. And I had this idea since I was 16. And so I wanted to do a mentorship program for type 1 diabetic children. And I wanted to actually like impact their lives. I wanted it to be something that I would have wanted as a child. And so I brought out diabetes, diabetics and their families out to a Broncos game to have pre and meal, um, that kind of thing. And so the whole, I'd, afterwards, I guess I'd meet with them, we'd have a ceremony, it made them feel special. And so I kind of gave them some tips and tricks about the life that I live, the type of diabetes. And I also went to their school, did some awareness, uh, did a speech there. And then after that, there was in our Facebook group chat to have that kind of family aspect. And so the whole idea behind this was that I had the passion and drive to actually make a difference in their lives. I think my mindset for these coming back, like to the main point is that passion. And I think for even stepping up, I was passionate about the Broncos. I wasn't really, I was kind of more voluntold to speak up. I had experience through speeches in the past. I did speaking engagements. I did interviews for all diabetes work in the past. So after the crash, when I did my first interview, the PR was like, holy, you need to talk for all these interviews. I was like, I don't want him at all. I just wanted to say one interview and say, I'm done, kind of thank you. And they're like, no, 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 like, you got to step up and all this. And I was like, I don't know. Or like, you're assistant captain. Like, you got to step up. I was like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Like, I was a leader on the team. I should step up for this. So I kind of stepped, was voluntold, but stepped up into that role. And then it just kind of started snowballing there. And then lots of people started messaging me saying, like, we love hearing you. Um, had lots of people reaching out to me after that, that they connected with me and that um, kind of, spurred me to see that the impact I was having on people was actually being positive. And so as I proceeded with the that kind of thing, I did one speaking engagement that had like a huge interaction. People loved it. And then after that, I was told I should write a book after that first actually speaking engagement. And I laughed and I said, heck no, not at all. <laughs> and like, there's no way I'm writing a book. And then sure enough, like, like two years later, I have a book come out. And so <laughs> I think the whole reason behind it is my passion. My passion is truly to help others. I want to have a positive impact on every person that I touch. And there, I've noticed that we were given a platform, whether we wanted it or not. All of us from the crash were given a platform. And what we do with it was our choice too. And so mm -hmm. I've always wanted to try to make something positive of the situations I've been dealt with, like diabetes, my, almost losing my dad, like it's a tough situation where I want to try to make something positive. And that was one of the things was to actually use my social media for some positive to inspire others and let them know that they can still get through the grind of life and uh, live their life to the fullest. I mean, hats off to you for stepping up and being able to do that. I'm sure that was super hard in, to get to that point. And that's, I mean, that's really cool. The fact that you're able to do it probably, you know, shows so many people going through a struggle at different magnitudes, you know, that like, okay, there's, there's a light you know so I, I mean hats off to you that's that's awesome for like absolutely and like one of the big things too is it was difficult too like it wasn't easy for mm. me to step up especially right after the crash like 
I suffered a severe traumatic brain injury where I literally right. shouldn't be walking or talking. And then for me to go out and do interviews or do a speech at the NHL Awards, like that was not easy at all. And I do lots of practice behind the scenes that people didn't really realize. And then also mentally, like you lose 16 people as your family and like trying to talk about them or remember them is difficult too. Like it was emotionally challenging, physically challenging and mentally challenging. So for me, that was one of the big things was I had like a summer off after that, and mm-hmm. kept a little bit more low key. And now with going to chiropractic studies, I'm not going to be doing much interviewing. I'll be <laughs> absolutely focused and uh, getting ready for that. We got a small talk, eh? To be a chiropractor, you got to, how's the yeah. weather, how's the wife, how's the kid? Just the most awkward small talk you've ever, yeah. you've ever seen. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I think for me, I actually want to connect on a personal level and like actually get deep with the patients and help them hey. when they leave. Like when they get there, like they leave physically, mentally, emotionally better than they came in. And that's what I want for all my patients. Hey, getting creative with it. Maybe it's like a chiropractor slash like therapist almost in a way, you know, you're just, you're helping them out. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll see. we'll see where it goes. But like yeah, I have lots cool, of things kind of planned for it, like sports specialty and maybe into neurology. Like I really want to help as many people as I can and use my background and life and kind of my upbringing to help other people throughout whatever they're battling. Yeah, it's awesome, dude. You know, apologies in advance, like my mind going to the gutter. All I can think of, like when you say you want to build a connection is like Peter from Family Guy when he goes in for the interview and like they're vibing and whatnot. So Peter, where do you see yourself in five years? Don't say doing your wife, don't say doing your wife, don't say doing your wife, don't say doing your wife. Doing your son? <laughs> kicks him out of the office <laughs> oh yeah there's so many like movie scenes of uh, I don't know say like massage masseuses or like therapists or chiropractor scenes that were in movies or TV shows that bring like humor it's hard not yeah. to think of those <laughs> yeah dude I, I got a question for you and, and Pat and I were talking about this a little bit before the podcast and like Again, uh, forgive me, you know, if it's blunt. I, I don't know exactly how, like, the best way to word it is, but like, do you think, like, what do you think the reason, like, in the crash and the grand scheme of things, like, why you were able to survive? Because, like, in in my mind, at least as somebody who obviously wasn't in it, I see, you know, a bus going a hundred kilometers an hour down a highway, you know, a semi going a hundred, everybody meets. You know, a bus is really just a tin can with wheels and a couple seats. When you really break it down, you got a fully loaded semi, like. Obviously, like sitting at the front versus the back would have a little bit of a uh, you know something to do with it. But like, do you, do you think there's a reason why like you you know you made it and obviously majority of the guys weren't able to? I think the first like the impact and like where I was sitting helped for sure. The front of the bus obviously had the biggest impact than the, to the back, and I was a vet, twenty year old on the team, so we always sat at the back as vets. Um, normally, hockey players understand that kind of seating pecking order. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then there was people who were behind me that passed away and beside me that passed away and that didn't make sense. And I think what I can kind of gather was either they were against the window, like leaning against the window, like sideways, or they were standing up, changing into their suits. And those are like some of the two main reasons why I think they might've passed away. And had they not been doing that, I think they probably still would have been here, but, um, there's really no reason why or how. Um, I'm here and others aren't. I don't think it was really their time to go. I don't think it was my time to stay. I just think it was luck of the draw, and I was one of the lucky ones. Hmm. So I'm assuming you were sitting down at the time when when it happened. Yeah, I was sitting down in the aisle seat, and I ended up flying. Like I had five C right in my side of the eye. I was in row twelve, so I flew up seven rows and absolutely hit my side of the head. Um, fractured my skull, had a puncture wound, had like a skeleton glove in. Um, and so I had like 5C imprinted though, right inside my head. So I definitely flew up 12 rows. And I think if I would have probably been sitting inside the seat, um, it would have been a little bit better. But if I had a seatbelt on, I probably would have not even moved. Yeah, because you know, buses don't have seatbelts. Some do, some don't, yeah. So I'm assuming it was a team bus that just was old and didn't have seatbelts and whatnot? Yeah, I don't know if it did or didn't have seatbelts, to be honest. I don't think it did. I don't think it had seatbelts. And it also had some of those inverted tables, too. So where you have, like, oh, okay. um, those two seats that face the back of the bus, uh, we had that as well. And that was, like, kind of the halfway point. 
Um, normally they're at the very back, but that was kind of the halfway point on this bus. Mm -hmm. Pat, have you ever been in a bus with, with seatbelts? I, I don't think I ever have been. I don't know, man. I mean, you don't, you just typically don't wear them on buses. It's not, Yeah. you know, you're on the bus, you don't like really think to, I guess. More, you like just kind of chill. Yeah. Yeah. I know we had them for sure at York University. There's most of our buses, I think almost all of them, except for like a couple, didn't have seatbelts. Now, did yeah. you, are you, uh, are you still, sh no, you grad, did you graduate from York? Yeah, I did. I graduated with a commerce degree this past spring in 2021 mm -hmm. here. So did you... He's sophisticated. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> he's did smart, you... ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> he's got, yeah, he's, he's smarter than us. That's for sure. I mean, we're pod... I business, can't even read. Business Pat major. And I, <laughs> Pat and I were talking about uh, your book before uh, we came on. And I was like, oh, dude, I can't even read. Like, I, I can't even read his book as if he gave me a copy, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> like Pascal, my goalie coach. You have to get the audio Vancouver, version. He, <laughs> yeah, the audio book. You could read it to me. That'd be great. Yeah. Like, Pascal, my goalie coach in Vancouver, he wrote a book. And I just, I look at the pictures because like, I can't read. Like, it's it's a tough, man. It's a grind. It's uphill both ways. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, pictures are huge, though. I was, like, looking at the pictures first. And not going to lie, I wasn't a big reader. I'm still not really that big of a reader either. So I understand where you're coming from. And then due to my brain injury, uh -huh. I also have slow ability of reading too. So like audiobooks are the way to go for me. And I wanted to make sure this book was an audiobook. So it is in the format. I actually like do try to hook you up with that if you like maybe listen to it on your way. Okay. Dude, honestly, I got ten hours to Amsterdam on Tuesday. And then also like taking the bus and the train, like I can chip away real fast. How, how long is the audiobook or the podcast? Or the audiobook, sorry. It's yeah, it's eight hours, I think. Okay. Okay. You could get. You Once could put a good phone, dent into that. No. Oh, we, we can <laughs> chip. We can chip pucks in deep, and we can have them in. We can get a good chunk of that podcast done, man. I'm telling you, on the bus and the trains, buzzing, whizzing. Hell yeah! I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I never do. <laughs> I was curious at uh, York. Did you play hockey there? I did play hockey. I was on the men's hockey team. I actually didn't ever play a game, though. I was never cleared for contact. So, uh, like, with the doctors, due to my prognosis, it was supposed to be uh, in a vegetative state. They were like, this is, they classified me as a miracle. Wow. And I actually had, I did all these tests and did the impact test. Not sure if you guys are familiar with that, but it's yeah. concussion baseline testing. And I did it in Humboldt in 2017. And then I redid it in 2018 at York. And it was about a year later, and I ended up scoring higher at York than I did in Humboldt. Wow. And so, like, they were even more weird. I had no symptoms when I was skating. I had no symptoms when I was practicing. Um, I was keeping up with the guys, too, which was even a little more weird. And then on top of that, I, like, felt great. So I ended up going to see Dr. Charles Tatter. He's, like, the man of brain injuries. Like, he's a man. Uh -huh. If you go to see him, he's a neurologist. He's, like, world-renowned. He's the one that did CTE studies. He's the one that brought in helmets to the NHL. He's, he's a god of the neurology world. And so I went and saw him, and uh, he couldn't believe it either. He was like, if I look at you, you should be a sports student athlete. If I look at your image, you shouldn't be able to walk or talk. Wow. And so yeah. I thought the image was actually false. I was like, this is the wrong image. Like, yeah, it's an MRI of my brain. Um, yes, I had a brain injury because I acted differently in the hospital, but like, this isn't the right image. And so I ended up getting another image right after that appointment. And it came back the exact same as April 9th, 2018. And so like, I was actually very, very lucky and a miracle. Um, and I don't like calling myself a miracle, but that's like the way they describe it. Yeah. And um, so I called her quits trying to play hockey after that. Found on different roles within the York Lions men's hockey team and uh, never was able to play a game. They were going to dress me for a senior night and just have me sit on the bench. But uh, we never were able to have senior night because of COVID. Damn it. Yeah, COVID's a pain in the ass, but... The way she goes. Like, not yeah, that, but... yeah, no, I hear you. Damn, that's that's crazy, though, to think. Like, he seeing the picture and then just... I mean, the fact... I mean, I guess, yeah, you a miracle would be the way to put it. I mean, that's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah it's hard for me to accept, in a sense. Like, I don't like being called a miracle. I don't like being called yeah. anything like that. But there are really no other words. Like, either luck... Or miracle, um, those like yeah. those kind of interchange but, ones for that. Uh, I mean, I think I think the way that you're that you've acted in 
you know, that you've, uh, Im- the impact you've made with, you know, your opportunity here and with your platform is pretty cool, you know? So, you know, being a miracle and you, you know, you're funny calling it that, but I think you're, you're doing a great thing. So, I mean, complete props to you. That's, that's really great. So thank you. Appreciate so. that. Did you enjoy your time at Maine with Dozzy? Yeah. You know, Dozzy? Yeah. yeah. Dozzy and I played <laughs> together in Notre Dame. Fun fact. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, we were, my senior year, we were road roomies, me and Dozzy. So I want to say he was a sophomore. We did two years together. He's a great guy. <laughs> Unreal dude. Yeah, he's a really good guy. But that's hilarious. I just saw the connection. I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's the man. Hey, you know who I saw on the street? I don't know if I texted you about this or not, Pat. But uh, you know who I saw? I saw Brady Keeper on the street in Winnipeg about three weeks ago. Did you? <laughs> dude, I'm not kidding you. So my woman and I, we were grocery shopping or whatever, picking up a couple of veggies or whatever, you know, some you know, some lettuce, some tomatoes, and some potatoes for dinner or whatever. And we're you know we're driving, we're coming into my park gauge, my parking lot, my apartment complex, and I see this guy walking with a COVID mask and a Florida Panthers bag. I'm like, no fucking <laughs> way. And then I I just like I unroll the window and I'm like, hey, just to like kind of get his face like to turn towards me. I'm like, no, that's Brady Keeper. I'm like, keeps, keeps. How you doing, man? And so he comes over and he's still got his COVID mask on. He's got the Panthers bags, he's got like 13 sticks. I'm like, how you doing, buddy? Because like he was, well, he played with you, obviously. Yeah. And then he was buddies with one of my best friends from uh, VIU when, when I was there. Yes. And uh, I, I tried, you know, you should come to the podcast sometime. <laughs> Sonk me. No reply. What do you, so. what do you say? He's like, yeah, man, just send me, send me a message or whatever. We'll, we'll chat sometime. Or, yeah, like, yeah. Like, he was with his lady, right? He was Did, with his does he? Wife, right? Yeah. Uh, Yes, they did get married. Actually, he's got a couple of kids, but he's um, got a few, yeah. yeah. Did he? Did you say that that you do it with me? Did you know who you were? No, I I, I didn't yeah. want to. I didn't want to name drop. I didn't want to. I just like ah, oh, you know, I got a podcast. He, you know, boys with Shay. You know, Yari at Vi. <laughs> yeah, we know each other, man. You he's a, a podcast sometimes. He's an interesting guy, keeper. Yeah, he uh, heard. he's very like to himself, kind of like quiet, yeah. but like pretty funny. So it's like he. If he liked you, he liked you. If he didn't, he just kind of never spoke to you, kind of. He did He did like me a bit. Like, he would talk to me, and we would kind of laugh together. And I think coming from Keeper, who, like, didn't talk to him, was a lot. So maybe we could get him on. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> well, we're trying yeah. to get the on-the-bench yeah. boys, Keeps. Who, who else is on the list of guys we're trying to get? <sighs> who else? Are we? I don't know, man. We, we cause a lot of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of which we got pot. on the podcast before. Yeah. Well, the on the bench, I only reposted my fictional knee to your face, so I don't know. I don't know if if Oli posted and's coming on or not. We'll see. Oh. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it, man. He he's nice to me in person every time. Him, Stephen Ryan, they're great guys. Yeah. Even you know, ha- you know I, I don't personally obviously I don't smoke, but you know, smoking a dart with uh, you yeah. know Ryan outside the XL Energy Center, good guys. Hack darts like chimneys. But uh, yeah. no, or can't he get does, a text yeah. back, and but he will repost the reel of you kneeing me in the face with you know, Masvidal and Askren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a beauty. Anyway, speaking of miracles, thank you to our guest for coming on. That was a miracle. I shot my shot. Hey, Dahlgren, Weiss, and uh, is there somebody else we invited? Oh, Downey. Yes. Sensei Downey. Yes. Sensei. So we're uh, we're three for 264. I threw another <laughs> burner at uh, Ryan Miller today, too, now that I'm hey, terrified. Might I'm as well. Coming back. And Jimmy <laughs> Howard. Anyway, Sling the Biscuit, episode 22. I'd like to thank you for listening as always. We drop a new episode every Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern, as always, on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, the video version. You want to see Pat's reactions? You want to see my face? You want to see the podcast without me for the first minute? YouTube's the way to go. If you're on the go, if you're uh, Pete the Uber Delivery, DoorDash guy, you got to listen to the go. We're all over the uh, mobile platforms, including Google Podcasts, to our two listeners. Google. God bless you guys. <laughs> we thank you as always. Enjoy this outro song, Royal Blood. Thanks for listening.